Hey guys and welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how to paint Blood Angel Tactical Marines and as you can see this is the model we'll be working with today. He's just been sprayed black using Games Workshop Black Spray. The first color you will need is Corn Red. You'll be using this as a base for the whole model. And of course a standard brush. I'm going to use this one here that has been quite worn uh, because you don't really need to be neat in this stage. All you need to do is just make sure that you paint all the armor panels red and give it a nice even coat. The end result should look something like this. Next you will need a red wash such as Karaberg Crimson. With this all you want to do is go over all the armor paneling you have just painted trying to make the wash pull into all the crevices and corners. Once it is dried, the end result should look something like this. Next up, you will need corn red again, and basically all you're going to do with this is apply a slightly thinned layer. Uh, just thinned enough with either water or mediums, which I'll show you later, just so that it goes on smoothly and isn't clumpy or thick, and it provides a nice smooth layer. And basically you're going to do the first layer over all the armor panels that you have just done taking care to leave sort of like an outline over each panel where the wash has pulled. Once you're done it should look something like this. As you can see it is nice, bright and vibrant. However we are not done yet. Next up you need a dark silver paint such as Lead Belcher and you are just going to use this to go over anything that you want to be silver such as the bolt gun. Then we are going to take Warp Lock Bronze. Now you don't have to use that color. You can use anything that is basically a dark coppery color and go over anything that you would like to be gold by the end. This includes things like the skulls, uh, the right hand shoulder pad there and the scroll on the back as well as the Aquila on the chest. Then you will need a black wash such as Nuln Oil. And basically what you want to do with this is go over anything that you have painted silver. Once again trying to pull the wash into all the recesses. Next up you'll need something like Agrax Earthshade which is basically just a brown sort of wash. And this you'll basically just use to go over anything that you have previously painted that coppery color that you want to be gold in the end. Once again try to make it pull into all the crevices as it always adds depth. While we wait for that to dry grab some Rakarth Flesh, it is basically like a dark tan color. And we're going to go over all the purity seals. This also works with anything that is cloth based. All you need is a smooth even layer, just a thin one as you'll be putting a wash over this. Next up you grab some Evil Sun Scarlet and you'll just be painting the top of the purity seal red. Then you'll be moving back to Agrax Earthshade or whatever brown wash you have used once again and basically just going over the purity seals once again trying to get it to pull into all the crevices and recesses. Next up we will need Corn Red and Mephiston Red. Basically we'll be mixing these two up to try to make the next layer shade up. As you mix these two colors together to get the perfect shade, uh, it is important to note that you will need a Limea Medium or Flow Medium as I've mentioned before. You can use water, it does work, however I find that the medium stop the paint from drying as quickly and therefore allowing you to work with it much longer. Basically all you need is just a slightly lighter shade compared to the previous base layer that you put down. As you can see here it is only a few shades lighter and that is exactly what we want at this stage. The medium also helps to thin down the paint so that when it dries it's not such a big jump from one color to another and it blends in better. Here you can see the flow medium that I prefer to use however there are multiple ones out there and they're very easy to find and generally inexpensive at your local craft or hobby shop. A very important note though is as you can see here the flow medium that I use it is white in color and it does lighten up the paint just just slightly but it's important to note because the more medium you add the lighter it will become. Once you have mixed up the right shade all you need to do is apply it much like you did before. Slowly and smoothly around all the armor paneling taking care to leave a outline of the previous color behind because the goal of this is to try and step up the colors gradually rather than just paint over the previous layer. Once you are finished the model should look something like this and it is already looking much brighter. 
Next you will need Mephiston Red and Evil Suns. As you can see we are getting lighter and lighter in our colors and basically you'll just be doing the same thing you did before where you mix them together, add the medium and paint it on in a smooth even layer taking care to leave that outer rim that I mentioned before stepping up the armor progressively. After it has dried it should start looking something like this. This one's not quite dry yet and it does get lighter as it goes. As a final layer for the armor you can use just straight evil suns with medium. As you can see here I'm mixing it with more medium than normal, two drops instead of one. As I mentioned previously it does bring up the color a little bit which is not really a problem in this case but you really do need the paint to be quite thin. Basically you can either use this as a whole nother layer to bring it up even brighter if that suits your taste. However basically what I use it for most of the time is just to sort of add another layer of shading where you sort of just paint where the sun hits. As this example I've used the corners of the shoulder pads or the rounded edges, top of the helmet and the top of the backpack. Basically just anywhere on the model that I think the sun would hit that would bring the red lighter. Once you are done it should look something like this. Next you will grab the lead belcher or whatever dark silver you've used and just go over all the metal such as the bolt gun again taking care to leave that darker outline that the wash has created. Then what you want to do is get retributor armor or whatever gold you prefer to work with and go do the exact same thing but go over anywhere that you would like to be gold uh, that you painted previously that dark coppery color. Once again if it does have edging like the scroll on the back take care to leave that outer rim created by the wash but otherwise just a thin layer and if necessary build up multiple layers to get that nice smooth even result. Once that is done you will need to switch to the fine detail brush so that you can do the Aquila on the chest. Take care to only paint each feather and to leave the darkened outline created by the wash in between each feather. Next grab some Yushapti bone and we'll just be going back over the purity seals. All you need to do is just put a smooth thin layer on any on all any and all cloth parts taking care to leave some of the wash behind in all the crevices or just here and there on the flat surfaces where it is pulled to give the illusion of depth. Once you have finished that grab some screaming skull which is the next color up and just basically give it an edge highlight around all the purity seals or anything that is cloth on the model. Next jump back to some Caribou Crimson or whatever red wash you have been using and all you need to do is put pretty much just a dab of it on the top of the purity seal. You really just need to put um, a small drop in there so that it pulls in all the crevices. Next up grab some Liberator Gold. I really like this color from Games Workshop. As you can see it is a perfect blend between silver and gold. It makes for an amazing edge highlight for anything that is gold. In this case, it is uh, such as the shoulder pad here, the Aquila on the chest, as well as the scroll on the back. As you can see, it just really, really makes a really nice edge highlight for gold. Now that the wash is dry, you're going to need to grab some Evil Suns, or whatever red you've been using, the bright one, and just go back to finish off the top part of the Purity Seal, just all the raised edges. Next, we're going to paint the feathers on the shoulder pad. You can also do this with like Sanguinary Guard Wings. Uh, start off with some Rakarth Flesh, but it will eventually be white. Basically, the Rakarth Flesh just provides a nice, smooth base for the white to go on. Next, grab some Agrax Earthshade, or whatever brown wash you've been using, and dab it onto the feathers, and just like before, try to get it to pull into all the recesses. While you are waiting for this to dry, why not jump around to do the small teardrop gems? I'm going to start off with some purple, some Nagarath Nightshade and just put a thin even layer on all the teardrop emblems. Next grab a slightly lighter purple, in this case some Xerius purple and basically just paint I'd say about a third of the gem from the right to left side or left to right if you prefer. Just a thin line that goes down. This is also going to try to create the illusion that there's a light shining into a glassy surface. Following the same method, grab some Gene Sealer Purple or another lighter purple and just do a thin layer on the edge. And now for the wreath on top of the helmet, I'm going to take some Warboss Green and just give it a base coat. 
After this, we're going to need to put a wash on, much the same as we have before, where you try to get it to pull into the recesses. Here we have Biltan Green and Collier Green Shade. Collier Green Shade, it's a green with a bluey sort of tint. However, I'm going to use the Biltan Green because I really want a dark green shade. Once again, just apply it generously and try to get it to pull into the recesses, taking care not to mess up your nice armor. While we are waiting for this to dry, uh, if you haven't painted all the gems purple, grab some green and paint the other gems such as the one on the backpack here. As well as the small little vial that's hanging off the arm there. Basically you just paint it with the war boss and then you do the same method you did with the previous gem, going up with the lighter shade. Then jumping back to the wreath, all you need to do is grab the lighter green and go over each petal with a fine detail brush. Next we'll be grabbing some scar white and simply filling in the feathers from the shoulder pad. Once again taking care to leave the recesses dark. Next grab some Abaddon black and now it's just about touching up where the red has spilled, such as the seals in between the armor and the bolt gun housing. This next step is completely optional, uh, but I find it does make a difference. Grab some Eshin Grey or any other sort of dark grey, and all you want to do is just basically give an edge highlight to anything that's black, such as the bolt gun housing. Next we'll be trying to paint the eyes of the Space Marines by grabbing some Warboss Green and just putting a thin layer on the eye lenses, taking care not to go over the edge. Try to leave a dark rim around the lens if you can. Next we will need to put a wash on the lenses. I've chosen Collier Green Shade, as you can see here it is a really nice mix between blue and green. And all you need to do is apply it generously to the lens, however taking care not to mess up the armor. While you are waiting for this to dry, why not add yet another edge highlight to the purple gems, in this case using the purple edge highlight made by Games Workshop, just the thinnest of lines around the edge. At this stage in the process, I like to uh, take the time just to add small details here and there while washes dry. A perfect example of this is by taking scar white and just adding a white dot to any and all glassy surfaces where the sun would catch uh, to try and get the, or basically to try and create the illusion of reflection. Uh, we do this exact same thing right at the end with the eye lenses after we've added a few more layers. Adding the next layer to the eye lenses, just grab the next lighter green up and add a thin layer. If you like, you can use the same process you used with the armor and leave a small outer rim of the previous color behind as you step up lighter and lighter. However, this is totally optional, only if you want to. As I mentioned before, jumping back to Scar White, we are just going to add that glint of sunlight into the eye lenses. You literally only need a dot or two. Once again, completely optional, but I find it does make all the difference, especially when you see it recreated amongst a whole army. Here you can see the finished result. As you can see, it is bright, vibrant, and clean. Hopefully this tutorial has helped you. Uh, please feel free to check out my other videos as I have tutorials and I'm always adding new ones on other Space Marine chapters, such as my soul drinkers as seen here. Please uh, like this video if you like it, comment below, let me know how it has helped you and of course let me know what you would like to see in the future and I'll try and make it happen. Thanks for watching guys and stay tuned.